Healthcare workers, doctors and nurses were heroes during the pandemic, but now the pandemic's not so much of a problem. So who cares what happens to them, right? <coughs> Hello there, you 5.3 million awakening wonders. We are on a voyage into the limitless and the forces that seek to limit us cannot be victorious as long as we retain connection with the inner light. Listen, if you want to see more of that kind of stuff, unexpurgated, live in the room, asking me questions, come and see me on tour. I'm all over the UK in places like Carlisle, Plymouth, Blackpool. I'm going to do a big meditation special in Blackpool. There are tickets available. The link is in the description. Now, during the pandemic, Many of us felt incredibly grateful for healthcare workers, nurses, doctors that were willing to put their own lives, their own sanity on the line to ensure our safety. We learned, didn't we, during the pandemic, that life is sacred. And who should we value above all else and above all others? Nurses, doctors, those that are willing to put our welfare ahead of their own. And surely, you know, you know, given that there could be a pandemic just around the corner, right, Mr. Gates? We should probably ensure that healthcare workers continue to be well-respected and well-regarded. So let's see what's happening in that sector, in your country, in my country, and around the world. As the COVID-19 pandemic unfolded in California and across the US, healthcare workers were hailed as heroes, fated during long hospital shifts by rounds of applause and even gifts of food. They were praised by government officials. The Pope prayed on their behalf. Here in our country, we all stood on our doorsteps and clapped our hands and banged our pots and pans. That should keep them going for a couple of years. Could we have a pay rise? Bam, bada, bam, bada, bam. Oh no, a bang on a pot and pan will do just as well. Two years into the health crisis though, nurses say they've come to realise that not much has changed. Hospitals continue with staffing levels and bed space capacity that are inadequate to any surge in emergency care. Health workers still find themselves battling their own employers, most of them profit-driven companies to create conditions that will allow them to provide the kind of care they say patients need. You hear this again and again, don't you, anecdotally, if you speak to healthcare professionals, they simply don't have the money and resources to provide the care that they want to provide. They don't have the management structures, they don't have the funding, they don't have the goodwill. In our country, it's almost as if they're being deliberately hollowed out to facilitate privatisation. That's what they do. They underfund things, they mismanage things until in the end you go, all right, just privatise it, let your mates buy it. You know, and in America, I'm sure the models are different. I know you don't have, for example, public health care, so I'll be interested to read how the distinctions play out when it comes to your health. We're getting pizza and ice cream. We didn't want that. No, both of those things are actually very bad for you. We wanted things like personal protective equipment. Right, we need personal protective equipment. Could I offer you a Cornetto? Well, that's not really going to help. Right, we've got to do a heart bypass operation. Mamma mia, look at this one. It's got pineapple on it. Protective equipment and enough staff to do our jobs, said Zene Trienfo Cortez, an RN and co-president of National Nurses United. By all accounts, the pandemic has left a deep mark on the nursing industry. Thousands of nurses were fired or suspended for not getting a COVID shot, while due to shortages, healthcare workers who had tested positive for the coronavirus were asked to return to work. Some of them are healthcare workers. They didn't want to get the shot for their own reasons. Meanwhile, people that had coronavirus were asked to return to work. Hold on a minute. Aren't these people heroes? You're heroes. We love you. Have an ice cream. Have a pizza. Uh, I'm not sure about getting that uh, vaccine. Boo! You're a villain. It's your fault there even is this pandemic. Hello? I'm the same person. I've actually got coronavirus. You, back to work. Back to work. But the coronavirus is dangerous. That's why they've got to get vaccines. I'm not getting a vaccine. Boo! Boo! Have a pizza. Have an ice cream. How does this thing make sense? The hospitals are sacking people, then realising they don't have enough staff, having to re-employ people that have coronavirus. The whole thing's a bizarre conundrum of contradictory measures and bizarre values. How many times lately have you noticed yourself have to go one minute these people are villains, next minute they're heroes, we support this war, we don't support that war. And you might say there's a shifting perception due to evolving scientific narratives, which somehow some of those nurses and healthcare workers preempted with their own personal decisions. And in any event, the shifting scientific narrative doesn't re-employ those nurses. It doesn't solve the healthcare crisis that's being brought about by slapdash decisions, virtual signaling, and ad hoc sackings. 
Experts say that about 20% of all healthcare workers have quit since the onset of COVID. That's a bit worrying, isn't it? 20% of them have gone, oh, I can't handle this no more, it's enough. It's because they're not being treated correctly. It's because they're not being respected. It's because they're not being valued. Hospital administrators and lobbyists, meanwhile, claim they cannot substantially increase staffing levels because of severe shortage of nurses willing to take their jobs. I'm not surprised. Like, there's a lot of people that want to be respected, valued and paid well, and they won't accept just ice creams and pizzas in lieu of respect. In reality, those forces have been at play for years, perhaps decades. As the healthcare industry in the US moved stridently towards a profit-first model, workers have felt the effects of staffing levels being trimmed to the bone, while hospitals regularly run at nearly full capacity and many workers have made the decision to leave. Do you hear what they're saying? This has been going on for decades. Do you remember during the pandemic? Oh no, hospitals are full because of the pandemic. Bloody pandemic. And in particular, the unvaccinated. They've caused all this, the unvaccinated. Meanwhile, we now learn that they've been trying to trim that profession to the bone to maximise profit. That's why the hospitals aren't run effectively. That's why there's not enough staff. That's why the pandemic is having such a negative impact. But that's a complicated idea that involves powerful institutions and profitable systems amending their value system and possibly reducing their profit. That's complicated. Better to blame the unvaccinated. Oh, you unvaccinated. You've driven people out of the nursing profession. I'm unvaccinated and I'm a nurse. You unvaccinated nurse. Have an ice cream and a bit of pizza. A small slice. The fallout among registered nurses has been especially striking. According to the National Council of State Boards of Nursing, there are more than 4.3 million RNs, registered nurses, with active licences in the country, and some 5.1 million RN licences issued overall. Yet only about 3 million are currently employed as RNs, 1.7 million of them at hospitals. Wow, so it seems like there's a crisis in that profession, and in order to address that crisis, you're going to have to, for a start, pay people more and treat and better. We know, of course, that healthcare professionals aren't especially motivated by money, otherwise they wouldn't be in the caring profession. But I think it's incumbent upon us as members of a society to create environments where our most valued members are treated well and treasured. One thing that the coronavirus pandemic showed us is that maybe our priorities were a little bit off kilter. We all of a sudden realised that about 80% of jobs could just stop without it making any meaningful impact. But when it came to deliveries, when it came to clean cleaning and hygiene and sanitation, when it came to health care, all of those caring, valuable professions that build societies, that build systems, people that are invested in more than just making money. I know we've all got those capacities in each of us. Sometimes I think all I care about is my own personal gratification. But on other days, I think, no, there's something more important to this. I reckon that we should value treasure and prize people in healthcare professions because they've already made decisions that lead the way for us ethically and morally, as well as putting their lives on the line, doing something that if it isn't done, will lead to more suffering for all of us. Many nurses across the country were experiencing burnout even before COVID. Now, isn't it interesting, the tendency of our media to cudgel and bludgeon us with simplified narratives. Oh, the nurses are leaving because of the pandemic. We can't cope because of the pandemic. Nurses are leaving before the pandemic because they've not been valued properly, because they're not paid properly. I know this to be true in my country. I've been in hospital, sadly, or, you know, just this life, a, a lot over the last couple of weeks. NHS hospitals, that means publicly funded hospitals. As usual, you meet the same great brilliant, spirited people. And you know that they're working against adverse conditions. They're being expected to do things they can't do. They're not being supported correctly and valued and treasured like you would if you lived in the kinds of societies we purport to. If you're going to have the flags, the pageantry, the pride in a nation, then support the systems that make up a nation. Support the people that make up a nation. People whose priorities are based on more than just making money. These are the kind of people we're talking about now. And how do we pay them? Oh, we'll clap at 8pm every Thursday in this country. We'll wear a badge or a sticker. We'll even give them pizzas and ice cream when necessary. But when it comes to treating them with respect, giving them suitable shifts, paying them appropriately, then suddenly the drawbridge comes up. Not because we, ordinary people, want it that way, but because it doesn't suit economic models and profit-driven modalities to treat people with respect. It's too expensive. A lot of those were people who did not feel supported by their employers. And of course, we lost some people who simply said enough during COVID. 
Long hours and weeks in dangerous conditions, often in makeshift settings, including tents erected outside facilities and storerooms converted to intensive care areas, led some nurses to take leave of absence, retire early or simply quit. Some objected to being required to get vaccinated, union leaders say, while many who left saw inadequate staffing and thus increased workloads and inferior patient care as a problem that wasn't going to get solved. Do you notice how the media always want to direct your attention to an easy scapegoat? It's the unvaccinated. It's these nurses and doctors that won't get vaccines. The very people that were heralded as heroes a matter of months ago are now easily vilified. Where's the consistency of values and principles? Where's the opportunity to have conversations? Where's the ability to accept inflection, nuance and accent around these issues? California is the only state in the country with mandatory ratios of nurses to patients in hospitals requiring one nurse for every two patients in ICUs and one for every four patients in emergency departments. But as COVID surged, Governor Gavin Newsom quietly allowed hospitals to relax those ratios, leading nurses to stage protests over what they saw as a capitulation to hospital systems that knew they were understaffed and did little to address the problem. Clearly, that was presented as an emergency solution to a unique problem. But by coincidence, that emergency solution supported the ongoing requirement of those monetized hospitals to increase profit. As long as you have that motivation built into a care system, you're going to eventually have to compromise when it comes to staff and patient care because profit is the invisible ideology that dominates all. Many hospital administrators have said repeatedly that they cannot hire nurses fast enough to meaningfully increase their staffing levels. This could be an opportunity, couldn't it? Couldn't this be a chance for people that don't have purpose or meaning in their lives to train to have a vocation that couldn't be more meaningful, could be more valuable to a society? But if that idea doesn't sit well with the profit-driven system, it won't be undertaken. And you call it reality. And you say people that think this way are not being pragmatic. We form reality. Our ideas are the basis of reality. Do you think you live in something that just spilled out into a universe when it comes to economic systems and political ideologies? Or do you think that there are people, institutions and elites within these systems who benefit from it being this way? Just take the simple example of reducing nurse ratios. If the patients don't benefit because it decreases the quality of their care, the nurses don't benefit because it increases their workload. Does someone, does anyone benefit? You think about it for yourself. Answer in the comments. Who benefits from these systems? Do you think this is just the way things are? Or do you think things are this way because certain interests benefit from it? Dr. Gene Noble, who directs COVID emergency response at the University of California, San Francisco's Parnassus Hospital, said in December that her department was relying on travel nurses for about 20% of its shifts. If there is an outbreak somewhere, they will go to that region of the country, in part simply because the pay for them is higher in emergency situations, Noble said. So we have struggled for nursing staff, even though, directly speaking, we haven't had a lot of COVID cases in our hospital lately. Not because of COVID, because of economic reasons, because of ideology. So again, another one of those moments where I get to suggest something that would be a radical improvement to the systems we live within, pay healthcare workers properly. This will mean reducing the profit of certain healthcare interests. But, you know, with controlled drug prices, with proper taxation on pharmaceutical companies, with the return of the vaccine profits into their healthcare systems, many of which were funded by tax, your tax money, by the way, with new measures like this, you can decide where those resources go. When people say you don't want more taxes, I recognise you as a normal person don't want more taxes, but more taxes for Pfizer, more taxes for Johnson & Johnson and Moderna for the profits made from this pandemic to end up back in the social systems that we all live within. Is that a bad idea? You tell me. Answers in the comments. The problem, Noble said, is that in a profit-driven health system, hospitals make money by constantly running at nearly full capacity. You have to do that. You know what it's like when you run a business. You don't want too many staff. That's your biggest overhead. So even a surge of the flu or some other illnesses can put them into overload very quickly. So just to be clear, it's unvaccinated healthcare workers, nurses and doctors that won't take the shot that are causing this problem. Not, for example, the fact that in my country, the NHS paid a markup of at least £2 billion for its first Pfizer dose, six times the cost of the pay rise the government agreed to give nurses last year. So what I'm essentially saying is the government made a choice to overpay for that vaccine, didn't make a deal where they said we're only going to pay you this. And as a result of that, there aren't resources to pay nurses 
nurses and healthcare workers properly. There is enough money, there are enough resources, it's just all the money and resources are flowing in a particular direction. We are in moral distress. It's different from burnout, said Jill Leon, an RN in the COVID unit of Kaiser's Walnut Creek Hospital. Don't be childish. There is not a shortage of nurses. We have nurses, but they're not willing to work because the staffing situations put them in a position in which they're not able to care for their patients in the way they know their patients need to be cared for. I'm constantly talking with nurses who say, we've got to get out of this. Doesn't this suggest to you that cooperative models where the people that worked at hospitals had the right to decide how budgets were spent, had the right to determine the shifts they worked, had the right to decide what the ratio was between nurses and patients might be a good thing? Or do you prefer it all power to be centralised, for all of the information to be dictates rather than conversations? Do you believe we're not capable of participating in these conversations, of creating our own working environments, our own communities, our own schools? True democracy in short, that your family founding fathers laid out in the constitution that seems somehow to have been bastardised and corporatized into a sledgehammer of tyranny under a political party that names itself after the very system that it undermines with every passing day. But that's just what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. If you think healthcare workers should be paid properly, let me know if you are a healthcare worker or if you know someone that's a healthcare worker. Let's advance this conversation and discuss solutions together. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at this one or this one. If you're not on my mailing list, sign up to it. It's just one click away. Then we can communicate directly. You can tell me more. We can talk in detail. I answer problems directly. Did you know that? And if you want to come and see me live, there's a link in the description for fantastic live shows all over the UK. It's beautiful. Most importantly of all though, please stay free.